Hey, y'all. I forgot to pull myself up in the stream today. Good afternoon and welcome in, everybody. I'm so glad to see y'all here. Thank you to everybody in the chat today and uh, everybody who's joining us from all over the world. Okay. I love you guys. Uh, I have a great show for us today. I have Robbie Rains in the studio today. We're going to be talking about uh, Carolina cryptids. Okay. We've got a bunch of really interesting things to talk about today. And uh, I want to say happy International Women's Day to all of the women and the girls out there. And I want to give a very special, huge birthday shout out to my grandmother, Grandmother Nellie. She turns 92 today. So she was born on a very special day. So I hope, I hope that she gets to hear this today. I know she doesn't watch me live, um, but we're going to show her. We're going to show her a rerun. OK, so happy birthday, Grandmother Nellie and uh, happy International Women's Day to everybody out there, to all the ladies. And uh, just in observance of International Women's Day, we're going to be talking about boo hags today. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Actually, we are going to be talking about boo hags, but yeah, it's that's a bad joke. Okay. It's going to be fun. We're, we're just going to have fun today. Okay. Um, now, if you guys would like to uh, follow my work and all my shows, y'all go to the cryptidhuntress.com. Okay. And um, I got all, the whole lineup of all my shows, it's spaced out radio and my daytime show here and my remote viewing shows. Uh, those are all listed there along with all the events of the um, places I'm going to be speaking at this year. I'm going to be at the let's see let me pull it up here mm -hmm. i'm going to be at the georgia bigfoot conference that's april the first in dillard georgia y'all come see me there it's going to be a really good time at the dillard house okay and then may 19th through the 21st i'll be at the spaced out radio fan party we're going to be broadcasting live from the golden nugget casino the hotel there in las vegas <clears throat> and then i fly straight out to grafton illinois i'm going to be at the journey to truth conference presenting on remote viewing and cryptids. So that's going to be a really good time. Uh, Y'all can find all the information on my website. Okay. Um, and let's see. And if you'd like to uh, support my work and the things I'm doing, y'all can join my Patreon. That is the Cryptid Huntress on Patreon. And thank you to everybody who's a part of that already. Um, you guys are the best. You keep me going. And uh, and I appreciate, each, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I wish I could talk today. It'd be great. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I have a fantastic guest here with me tonight. I have Robbie Rains here. And let me give you a little background on Robbie. He is a police officer, an active field researcher, investigator, and a tracker. Uh, he hosts the podcast, uh, What's Really Out There? And he's a co-host of DA, DA Ex Machina. Okay, over there with DA Roberts and Anthony. You guys, it is it's such a great podcast. I know most of my audience is already watching them. Okay, welcome to the show, Mr. Robbie Rains. Hey, hey Robbie. Hey, I'm, I'm going to get my act together. I don't know why I forgot to pull myself up on the screen. And I, it's, it's one of those days. It's one of those days. It's going to be a good yeah. time, though. Thank you for being here. No, you're welcome. Thanks for having me again. Of course. Of course. Uh, well, I had you on Space Out Radio, and uh, that was such a good time. We had so much more we could have talked about. So I figured I'd bring you on my daytime show. Yeah. Uh, happened to be off today, so I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I see. I actually have some of my teammates in the chat today. Uh, oh, I got Glenn Jackson in here. Uh, Glenn is part of my team. I have got, I'm going to be on his show tonight, actually, the Nightlight Studio, home of the Sport Cap podcast. <laughs> That's from going tonight. So um, I've got him. I think Grumpy might be in here, too. Uh, Bob Wilson. I thought I saw somebody say something about Bob. So if Bob's in here, uh, I hope you heal up, Bob. He had surgery this morning. So I hope you're doing well uh, today. All right. Well, this is going to be really fun because I love local legends and lore. Okay, Robbie. And you live in South Carolina where y'all have mm -hmm. lots of that <laughs> going on. Yeah, more more than I thought once when I first started my, my journey into this. I, I just... I, honestly didn't even figure there was a lot of Bigfoot sightings. I mean, I had mine, but you just, back then you, there was no internet. So, but ever since this <laughs> wormhole, <laughs> rabbit hole, whatever you want to call it, has been open. I found out there's been not only a, a hundreds upon hundreds of Bigfoot sightings just in my area, but other cryptids too. So it, it's been kind of an eye opening experience to get into this and see what's, in my backyard, so to speak. 
Yeah. I mean, I was I was surprised to find out that we had do a dog man here in the county where I live. Okay. So yeah, we talked about that on your other show the other night. Yeah. Did. Yeah. You know, this Georgia and South Carolina, all all over the South, we are chock full of cryptids down here. And uh, and I think mm -hmm. Bigfoot is one of the main main cryptids that people see the most. Uh, but this lizard man character y'all got out there in South Carolina, that's pretty popular, I hear. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a really, really popular, and that's actually one of the more interesting cryptids that uh that's around. Um, most of the tracks you hear of that are three toed. So if you think mm -hmm. back to Legend of Boggy Creek, there was one trackway that went through uh, one of the farmers' soybean fields, and it was a trackway of three toed tracks. But you only usually hear about that with the lizard man, or and some people have said Gugway has three toes. That's the only Bigfoot type cryptid that anybody has said has a three toed track. So it's kind of a little correlation, but there's been a lot of three toed tracks found around Bishopville, Lee County, and all that area. Uh, there's a guy that lives down there right now. It's pr uh, pretty avid. I can't remember what his name is, but. He uh, he lives somewhere next to one of the little small airports down there, and he's found hundreds of tracks down there, all of them three toed. Three toed tracks. So mm -hmm. the only thing that would be three toed, I think, would either be a Sasquatch or some kind of creature that had its toes cut off. Okay, well, or but, it, it would be a, like a, a reptile, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, and like alligators have, um, it's like five toes on the front and four toes on the back. Because people have said, okay. well, maybe it's an alligator, but alligators don't have, I think it's four on the back. It's either five on the front and four on the back, and I'm pretty sure that's the way it is, or vice versa, but I'm pretty sure it's four on the back. Um, I got a buddy uh, that started the podcast with me who was an alligator hunter, and he hunts right down around that area. And he said there's some pretty big gators down there. He told a story on the show that they had a 10-foot, 550-pound alligator that was in two feet of water that they didn't even know it was there until they actually got it. That's a big animal to hide in two feet of water. So it is. Well, that's the power of camouflage, mm -hmm. I guess. That would be what you call adaptive camouflage. Adapting yeah. to the area and I wouldn't want to step on that thing. No. That would not that'd probably be one of the it's what we call self correcting error. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, it, you probably wouldn't. You wouldn't make it far if you stepped on a big old alligator like that. Probably. Probably you know? not. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got a lot more to worry about out in the the swamps of South Carolina um, than just alligators. I was reading up on. I mean, there's even mermaids. There's mermaid sightings in South Carolina. There have been since yeah. I think the 1700s during the Revolutionary War. There were reports of mermaids in South Carolina up in the rivers. So I don't know. Mermaid and I wouldn't say mermaids are dangerous. I don't know. I don't know. The siren. Well, some, some legends say they were, some say they weren't. I mean, uh, you know, and there's been a lot of speculation about the mermaid legend, about you know, these sailors that have been on that were on ships for, you know, months upon months upon months that you know they would see things and that were they described as as women, that, but there you know every, people have tried to explain it away, say it was manatees, which some of them could be that, but you know there's not really been a whole lot of manatee sightings out in the middle of the ocean. They're you, you know coastal, yeah, and and in riverways and things like that. So maybe some of those could have been you know unident or you know the. Misidentification. Misidentification. I couldn't think of the word. Sorry, I had a yeah. Had one of them brain things again. But uh, I've, I've had most, them all day. <laughs> most of the most of the stuff out there in the middle of the ocean, I, I wouldn't say was a manatee or a sea cow or whatever, you, you well, know, whatever terminology. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't see beautiful like that, right? I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't see. <laughs> I don't see uh, a sailor, even if he's been on out on a boat for seventeen months. I don't see him. <laughs> you know misidentifying a sea cow for that i mean oh I, I mean the mind the mind is a powerful thing though i don't know you get desperate sure. they probably sure. i would have to be pretty desperate to think a sea cow was that but, but, but putting lipstick on a pig right yep, <laughs> still a pig. 
still big, still, still a sea cow. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> gosh, man, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was reading that. What did, what did I read about the mermaids? They were saying that the mermaids, uh, they said they would swim up river from the ocean and people would see them on uh, like a bank where they would be combing their hair. They'd comb the salt out of their hair from the salt water. Uh, and that over the years, they started building dams to stop that river flow so that the mermaids could not keep going inland. Uh, and so there, that's why there's no more mermaids is what, is what mm. the story is. That's the legend out there. And, uh, and I believe that's, it's either in South Carolina or North Carolina, but um, I, I figured we'd cover South and North Carolina today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. Well, I'd like to talk about the boo hag with you today. Right. Um, that is something I have never discussed before because I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, but I, I did some research the past couple of days. Uh, but you you've done a show on them. Yeah, what do you know? yeah, and um, and I'm not I'm no by no stretch of the imagination an expert. Uh, but what Norm and I were able to dig up on that show, or for that show, was um, a lot of it is steeped in uh, like Gullah and mm -hmm. uh, that. To give give you a better, you know, more like a link with the voodoo type stuff. Now, voodoo is traditionally Jamaican and Haitian and things like that. But Gullah uh, is lower part of South Carolina and Charleston area. Uh -huh. uh, that's that's that culture. And I believe it's, uh, and I don't know what, can't remember what region Norm said it was in Africa. But that is the, and that was it's kind of like a mix of some of the things that they ran into over here and some of their traditions from Africa. And it kind of morphed into the boo hag. And it was more along the lines of uh, one of those stories that told the kids that, you know, you better behave or, you know, boo hags gonna come get you at night and it entered your dreams. And some, it, it, the way it looked to me is <clears throat> depending on what, particular group was talking about it every things would vary about what what it could do what it couldn't do what it was what it wasn't so i think it's one of those that um kind of like the tennessee wild man with bigfoot where it's a mix of and i think if somebody saw a skunk ape and they smelt the, what the skunk ape was reported to smell like and they were telling somebody and then somebody else saw you know a gugway and they were like, oh, okay, that's what I just saw. And, and everything starts getting mixed together. And pretty soon you got the Tennessee wild man, which is described with about three or four different species of Bigfoot all together. So I think the boo hag's kind of that, that same thing as, you know, these people might have witnessed or experienced or saw this and this people, and everybody starts talking about it. And over time, it just kind of gets mixed into what the boo hag is now, which is pretty much a mixture of several different types of. You know, demons almost demons uh, a witch a succubus yeah there's all there, sorts of stuff yeah yeah there, there was there's there's mentions of witchcraft there's mentions of like you said succubus things there's mm -hmm. uh you know dream demons uh, yeah, in africa that's that's where a lot of those dream demons actually originated from the the legends and lores of that came from africa um so you know i i think it's a a colloquial thing to where, you know, kind of like, you know, when you think of a werewolf, you think of traditionally from the England or from that European nation. Mm -hmm. But when you get over here and you hear the Native American lore, it's a dog man. So, you know, you get sightings of these things and these people that were colonizers that came over and they would see a dog man to them. That was a werewolf. So, yeah. And over time, Dogman has kind of kind of went down like this, whereas Werewolf is up here, and it's in the movies, and it's books, and all that kind of stuff. But what were they really seeing a werewolf? Were they really seeing a Dogman? What you know? Things yeah, just get mixed, it, like like the country totally. were a melting pot. Yes, no, we totally, it totally, the lines get skewed and and crisscross and stuff, and it's all about perception and what you already know uh, as to how you identify these things. Now, the boo hag, it sounds to me like a succubus, 
what I was reading on it is that it it, it takes the the energy off of people. So it's basically mm -hmm. an energy vampire. Uh, it'll sit on top of you, which is like a succubus at night. I don't know if it's just men. I guess it's men and women. So that'd be like an incubus or succubus. Yeah, but then, then there, was, there was talks of them taking uh, children's energy too. That there were some, yeah. some accounts that you know, because that was the pure energy. So, yeah. Well, and, and that's kind of a recurring theme with a lot of cryptids and just scary stories when we were kids and and really bad people today. OK, I think I feel like there's um, children are targeted. OK, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I remember when I was a kid, I had an aunt who she she meant well, she didn't mean bad by this. But you know how your parents or your your aunts and uncles, your grandparents will tell you there's a monster under your bed. Mm -hmm. Um I, I was told there was a, the devil lived under my bed. Okay, when I was a kid. You know, my so, great grandmother used to tell me, you know, don't you go too far in the woods. The boogers will get you. Wood boogers, which you know, a lot of people call, use that as a as a term for Bigfoot or some kind of wild man or wild creature in the woods. So you know, depending on where you where you were at and what you what your cultural thing was, you know. You hear somebody say, "Oh, well, I heard about the wood boogers," and somebody from, say, the Pacific Northwest would have no clue what that is, but they heard Sasquatch or they heard Bigfoot. You know, it's essentially it's like an African elephant and an Indian elephant. They're both elephants. They're both the same species, but they're or they're just different subspecies of the same species. Yeah. Hey, you know, speaking of my grandmother Nellie, okay, the one whose birthday is today, I've. Happy birthday, Grandmother Nellie, once again. She had a really interesting story when I was a kid. She and my grandfather would tell us about Mad Maud. Okay, a woman named Mad Maud. She was a witch who lived in the woods. And uh, she had crazy wild hair. And, you know, you didn't want to go outside because Mad Maud. And the other one was raw head and bloody bones. <laughs> okay. So, and, and even today, like my kid and my my nieces and nephews and, and all, the, all the next generation, they all know about raw head and bloody bones and mad mod. You don't go out in the woods at night behind my, my, my sister lives in my grandmother's house now, uh, at the house that my grandparents used to live in. And those woods are, they're haunted, you know, it, it, I, they're probably not, but to us kids, they were, you know, and it, and it kept us out of the woods. Uh, and well, and, and plus, of course, my granddaddy had a story about the little boy in the wall. And so if we would spend the night at their house, he would tap on the wall at night and, and seeing a little boy's voice through the wall. Let me out of here. You know, well, and, and, I mean, it was terrifying. And funny you should mention Rawhead. I don't know if it's it's a correlation, but it's something you might want to look into. There's yeah. actually a legend in England of Rawhead Rex. They actually made a movie about that. No uh, way. It's a it's a it's a demon. Uh, uh oh. So I, I don't know what what the one you're talking about is, but that might be something you want to look into and, and do some investigation. I'll see if it that may be one, what we're talking about. Something coming from from Europe and coming over here and getting exactly. attacked. I just figured it was a figment of my granddaddy's wild imagination. <laughs> okay. So. No, there's a, there's actually an English legend about a demon called Rawhead Rex. Oh my gosh. Space Cadet Lottie, thank you so much. That is so sweet of you for that super chat. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to look into that because, um, yeah, there's there's usually some kind of truth or some kind of backstory behind every legend, yeah. you know. The guy, uh, that. the guy that did uh, the Hellraiser series, was it Clive, Clive Barker, I think was his name? Sounds right. I'm not he sure. Actually, he scary. actually did. He actually directed the movie and he said it was it was based on some local legends that that he wrote the movie about now, of course the movie took a lot of liberties and things like that but there was a, he actually found the legend and that's that's where where the basis for the movie came from wow pinhead man that's that's creepy creepy mm -hmm. as crap okay so this boo hag when i was reading about it um you know I, i've been awakened at night and felt like i couldn't breathe and i felt like something was on top of me um, a long time ago, back when I was in my 20s, that happened. Uh, and I'll, I'll never forget that. And it was really scary. But I'm also awakened to have like my cat sitting on my chest, breathing in my face. <laughs> it felt like it was sucking the life out of me. And I was and I, and I thought about that when I was reading about this. And I know that not not to say that these people have not experienced, a, a you know, their cat or not the boo hag or whatever. Uh, but it says that the boo hag will get on top of the victim's chest and hold uh, its face close to the person and inhale, and inhale that person's energy. And I thought, man, my, my cat used to do that back when I had a cat. 
good weekend. Well, so the, yeah, uh, that used to be a, a a myth about cats. Is cat, mm -hmm. they they used to think cats would kill infants when yeah. infants would probably die of sudden infant death syndrome. Sids, uh, right. and with cats, they they would you know uh, back then you didn't have the you know the advancements of medical knowledge that we have now. So they would they would blame the cat. Oh, you have a cat? Yeah. Oh, well, the cat sucked the kids' energy out. Yeah. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. They didn't talk like that, but you know, same thing. That's what they and that's what they believed. And it was from stories like the Boo Hag and uh, the sleep paralysis with with dream demons. That's one of the things that uh, supposedly they do is sit on your chest and hold you down where you can't move, and that's that, that form of sleep paralysis. And you feel like you're getting energy sucked out of you. So mm -hmm. all see all that stuff correlates with you know with with certain aspects of the boo hag. It does. And there's also another legend, uh, which is not it's not the boo hag, but it could be kind of similar to a boo hag in a way, because it's a witch that roams the woods actually of North Carolina and Tennessee. And it's one of my favorites. Her name is Spearfinger. I believe yep. I have a picture. That's a Cherokee legend. I love Spearfinger and I, I'm terrified of her as well. Okay. Because when we're out in the field doing research, she has actually come up before in our research. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, out in the field, uh, I'm not going to say I felt her presence, but I have, I have definitely gotten the heebie jeebies out in the field in the middle of the woods, in the dark, uh, hearing tapping on trees <laughs> and stuff. And I, and I just, just imagined Spearfinger tapping her finger on the trees out there. Yep. And it can be, it can be a little unnerving. Okay. Um, even though these are legends, there's a lot of truth behind a lot of these legends. She she originated well, from somewhere. Yeah, and, and every legend is based on some some form of truth. You know, we talk about this all the time on uh, DAX Machina. You mm -hmm. you see these movies out here, and you see all these fantastical things in these movies. But where'd that come from? Some <laughs> yeah. somebody wasn't just sitting. In every bit of this didn't just come out of their head. They yeah, a granted a lot of it, but they had to have seen or experienced something that made them start thinking, Oh, I wonder what, you know, yeah, that could make a good movie or that can make a good book or whatever. Even <laughs> DA with all his books, you know, a lot of that's based on um, accounts that he's gotten from people he's talked to and that's where it comes from. So it's based in and grounded in reality, even though his books are a work of fiction, they're, they're based and grounded in things that have actually happened. That's right. That's right. I mean, we have, uh, as, as a, a collective, as my, my team being out in the field, you know, we, we discuss Spearfinger sometimes. And we've, we've had a couple of incidents where we literally think that we we have some sort of spiritual contact, perhaps, with uh, an entity much like Spearfinger out there. So, and I know we're, we're super, we're, we're very open to like the supernatural aspect of all of this. And uh, so we're. You know, it's, it's just like I said, it's in the back of our minds. And I know that uh, Glenn's in the chat. He's talking about Spearfinger. Glenn, who's on my team, he just said that Spearfinger uh, is not really as pretty as that picture that I just showed. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a, a nice looking version of Spearfinger. Spearfinger is not. She's, she's like I an think, old, old hag, kind of. I think but, the second picture is probably closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, another thing is that she's a shapeshifter. OK, and uh, she's she's a shapeshifter who will eat. She targets children. Once again, we're, we're got, we have another entity that targets children and scares children and eats children. She really likes their livers. OK, she likes to go for the liver and um, she will trick children by pretending like she that she's their parent. She shapeshifts into their parents and people that they know and they love. And uh, lures the children in, and then she kills them and eats them. And uh, and then she'll go, and I think she turns into the kids and goes back into the homes where, you know, the kids that she ate, basically. And, well, she just, it's a continuous cycle of just shape-shifting into different people so she can go target victims. Mm -hmm. so she's a scary one. She's a real scary one. Yep. Um, I'm not yep. sure I'm more scared of her or, or a boo hag. But there again, it, you know, it could could all be the same entity that's you know it's like uh we talked about uh a lot of people when they say and i'm when i say people like look go back to hollywood you know they have a movie called skinwalkers which is their werewolves okay a skinwalker is not a werewolf mm -hmm. it may appear as a werewolf but it but that may be what you're you're 
completely fearful of. So it appears to you as to what's going to scare you the most. But yeah. a skinwalker is a is a is a basically a witch who has done something so evil, so dark, so soul twisting that it's almost impossible to come back from. And it has, but you know, it could be a dog, it could be a bird, it could be another human. It could be a werewolf. It could be a Bigfoot. And I think some of these sightings that people see when it's, you know, well, I saw this, but it, you know, it, it could have been something like that because just because somebody sees what they would describe as a werewolf, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it was. It, or these misidentifications that people say, well, it, I'm pretty sure it's a Bigfoot, but it looked like it had, you know, a canine face. But so it had to be a werewolf for it. You know, who's the, it's just like the, the one we did on the, the Girl Scout killings. You know, did you that was that? Creepy. yeah, that was a creepy show. That, that was great. that was a great show. Yeah, and and Mike has got a wealth of knowledge about that that Mike? case. Okay, wait, is it Stephen or Mike? Is that who's on your show with you? Uh, Abnormal Investigations is Mike. He, he's actually my guest on Space Out Radio this uh, this Saturday. He is, yeah, he is very knowledgeable in this case, and, and I can't wait. And, hear he, about it. he said you know he brought stuff to light that i was just like even as a 26 year veteran of police work i was just like oh my gosh you yeah. know some stuff that you you would see or would or have seen in horror movies like one of the girls the way it was killed was like a friday the 13th uh jason Voorhees type kill i mean she was, really? like, she was picked up in a sleeping bag and smashed against the a, a tree i mean yeah. you think about that <laughs> it was some dark dark stuff that was done i mean this and, is a real story too this really happened yeah, yeah this really happened it, it, it's it's a really and 22 i think might be off but, but there was 22 seasoned law enforcement officers that after they this guy's trial up and just okay we're done and just completely got out of law enforcement really mm -hmm. oh my gosh there, there's a lot to that case that just makes you go what and yeah. you know for 22 season vet not 22 rookies not 22 kids that didn't know what they were doing 22 seasoned officers you know probably 10 plus years experience just up and got out of law enforcement after this wow well that amy thank you for that super sticker thank you so much um where did that happen is that in oklahoma oklahoma mm -hmm. okay that's what i thought um, and did they, okay. So, so I watched the first half of the show and then I had my show live. So I had to, I had to tune out. So I missed the, the middle part of y'all show. Did they ever find the killers? Well, <laughs> that's some of the funny part of this stuff. The okay. guy that they, the, the guy that went to trial who was found not guilty unanimously by a jury of his peers, which okay. you think you would move for a change of venue in that because, but, uh, there were people saying, consider, <laughs> make sure I get this right. Um, and Mike can clear any of this up that, I, that I'm that i on or off about. Uh, the guy that they actually tried, he was involved in it, in my opinion, the A's opinion, Mike's opinion. Okay. But we don't think he was by himself. But that sheriff went after this guy. So this is the guy. He had escaped from this guy's, uh, from the sheriff's jail a couple of times. There was rumors that the, uh, that the sheriff's wife and this guy were having an affair. Uh, there was just a lot of stuff that you just like, you know, this should have been change of venue. Things should have been, should have been done that weren't done. And we're just, you know, as, as a police officer, I'm like, why did they, you know, there were people that this guy brought his kids in and said, Hey, my, or brought his son in and said, Hey, my son admitted he was involved in this. And they never went after the kid. They were even investigated it. They were just, this sheriff was dead set on this guy. And I think he had something to do with it. But there was, there were, uh, um, supposedly they brought, or not supposedly they did, they brought in another medicine man that, uh, and Naoma was actually talking about this too in the, in the chats. It's called old, the old smoke. They brought magic in to fight magic. And the, basically the way they called him is this, this, uh, this old Indian medicine man took them right to him. They'd been looking for him for however long, couldn't find him. He took him right to him, and he, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, tapped the bottom of his of his feet to take his magic away, and that was the only reason they were able to catch him. 
and it, it it is it is a deep 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 rabbit hole and we didn't even get a third wow. of the way through it probably whoa that does run deep okay so when yeah. i was listening to it i actually i was thinking that had to have been something i was thinking like a werewolf or something like somebody had shape shift like a skinwalker turn into a werewolf well, and, and kill those girls he, i mean he I know told it, he told well <laughs> The coroner said that uh, some one of the way some of those girls were torn apart, no human would have had the strength to do that. And uh, there was, I, I can't remember if it was during some of his in, his interrogation or whatever. He said, "I was watching y'all from above and below." There were reports of when they were getting close to him, birds take like he ran behind a tree, and before they got there, they saw a bird fly off, and they got around the tree, and he was gone. Yeah. Uh, there's reports of a black dog out there. Apparently, still to this day, they still see that black dog. Um, and it, it, it's, it is a wild, wild story. And it's it's all documented. This is like. Wow. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Actually, my, my friend Tony Green, who's actually part of one of, one of my teams, some of my research teams, uh, he came on my show on Space Out Radio. But he, he told me a story that happened personally in his family uh, that his uncle had. Uh, it, there was some point where the police had come to his house and uh, they were having some sort of a dispute and the uncle ran outside and went behind a tree and on the, the he didn't come out the other side of the tree, a, a dog or a wolf trotted off as he went, went past that tree mm -hmm. and went out into a field. Yeah. It's yep. interesting because when they go behind a tree, it's something about those trees that it transforms. Yep. So some kind of crazy black magic going on there, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the uh, the boo hag st stuff is is steeped in that that same type, of, not Native American obviously, but you know the voodoo type magic coming from, you know, from Africa yeah. things like that. And, and you know you get into that down in Louisiana in the voodoo and the, the rougarou. That's <laughs> you know that's 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 voodoo magic. Yeah. Well, there's the rougarou is not is not actually a true dogman or werewolf. It's it's a spirit yeah. that manifests inside somebody that turns them into something like that it's not not like a typical werewolf or a dogman who's probably just a creature that resembles that so that's right um okay so i actually did a show and looked into the wolf woman of mobile alabama okay there is an actual wolf woman down in alabama um I, I, I remote viewed that actually. And, uh, and I was picking up that it was actually from black magic. Uh, it was more like a Rougarou type of a, a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a dog man or dog woman. Okay. It was something that had been done through magic. Um, and so, and I'm, I'm hearing more and more about that these days. Um, a lot of these cryptids are shape shifting humans, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, I think a lot of that, uh, like, I've said, you know, you got, and I use it, it's basically like the, the Patterson Gimlin version or the Harry and the Henderson's Bigfoot, which is just, you know, your normal average everyday Bigfoot is, you know, just a creature who's out there doing, doing what animals do, surviving, you know, you got yeah. those, then you get some people have those experiences with ones like that and they're, they're all peaceful and, but then people get these experiences where they're like, you know, I was lucky to get out of there with my life. Maybe yeah. what they were, they weren't, didn't have an, uh, an encounter with a true Bigfoot. They had an encounter with, you know, something like a Rougarou or a Skinwalker or something like that, you know. But then you got yeah. Gugway and Genosqua who are, you know, if you go back and look at a lot of the legends on the Genosqua, those things were very savage. You know, they were uh, uh, pretty much hunted this tribe almost to extinction. And then once the tribe got, rifles repeating rifles from the settlers and they turned around and went and did the same thing because the thing uh and ryan from monster radio he he's the expert on this i'm so i'm what i'm yeah. telling you is just what i learned from him uh they were act, uh, the the other name for them was stone giants because what they would do is they would go out and roll in the river get the mud on their fur and then go roll in the river rocks and these native americans with their arrows couldn't penetrate you know it was like yeah. armor that's right. And you, you're talking, these were like, you know, your nine, 10 foot tall, 1200 pound Bigfoot. And they would go with it. This is where a lot of the, 
you know, they take women and children came from because they go into a village and they just carry off the women and children. That's right. Yeah. A, a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Spearfinger was known as the Stone Coat Witch. Uh, and some say that she has a some sort of relation to the Bigfoots and things like that. Now, Grumpy, who's in my chat, he's part of my team. Uh, he did mention in one of his comments a while ago in the chat that um, from what he remembers, uh, we had an incident with Bigfoot and Spearfinger. Um, you know, there, it was it was it was an incident with them. I, I'm not going to get into details about it, but it was um, she was attacking a Bigfoot. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I'm not to get into details. Uh, but yeah, she's a stone coat witch and uh, the stone coat giants. Yeah, they're impenetrable. Okay. Uh, you can't shoot an arrow through them because of that. Uh, I guess it's the mud or st stone, whatever yeah, you want to call it. They, well, they would roll in the mud and get their fur mm -hmm. sticky and then roll in those round river rocks and get those stuck all over the fur. So an arrow's not going to penetrate that. Yes. Rob, so what, 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 oh, wasn't sorry. until they went and traded and got repeating rifles from the settlers that they were able to start because i mean this tribe was and i i want to say it was the osage was the mm -hmm. tribe that they were i may be wrong on that um but i think that was the tribe that it was that it was it, it was pretty much at war with this group of bigfoot and oh they almost wiped the tribe out but then the tribe turned around and almost wiped them out once they got the repeating rifles so it was it was basically a a clan war if you want yeah. lack of a better term Yes. Yeah. Well, the Sasquatch are known to uh, some. Some say that they're they were a tribe. Okay, they're tr their own mm -hmm. tribe, and uh, and they fight with a lot of the Native Americans uh, out. And some sometimes they trade and they get along, uh, much like well. And Rob, Bigfoot, Michigan, Rob. Thank you for that super sticker. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, I was actually going to bring up one of my favorites. A lot of these are my favorites um, because I have been up to Judicola Rock. Okay, and so there's a legend of Sukalu up there. Yep. And I've done I've, I've done a remote viewing show on it. I know D A X Machina. You guys did a show on Sukalu recently, yep. and uh, and so some people say he's a giant. Some people think he's a Bigfoot. Was a Bigfoot, and uh, I, I think he was more Bigfoot. Um, yeah, I think that's another one of those issues like we just talked about. The, you know that you got the culture or the late the legend. I'm sorry, the uh, you know that says this and this, and then you got people who have seen Bigfoot, and things just kind of start merging. I think a lot of it was, like you just said, I think it was Bigfoot, but I think a lot of it was just merged with that legend, and, you know, people would would say, well, this is the legend of a giant, and all this, kind of, oh, well, that's Sukalu, and I think it's just, a lot of it's just Bigfoot sightings, which, because Bigfoot's yeah. not small, let's, you know, let's be honest, you, you're looking at a 12-foot creature out there, I mean, most people are going to call that a giant. You know, yeah, just, well, he was a giant. He was yeah. a, and he had a human girlfriend too. So he was a fierce warrior. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I had a picture. I could not find it today. My computer pooped out on me. Uh, but I had I have some pictures somewhere of a, a Sasquatch and a and his human girlfriend. They're like embracing and kissing her. It's really funny. <laughs> that picture cracks me up. I don't know why that's so funny to me, but um, I guess he kept her warm at night. And that's all that matters, right? So. And brought her dead deer. <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat, I guess. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, um, yeah. And a matter of fact, you know, they have Judicola Rock, which is up in the Carolinas, uh, not too far from a place called Cashers. Okay. And well, here I'll pull up a picture. I've I've actually been to Judicola Rock. I think I've been there twice, but uh, I went up there with uh, some elder friends of mine from the Cherokee tribe up there uh, that live live in Cherokee. And they've, you know, Chief David actually has written a book on the uh, Judicola Rock and the story behind it. And uh, I believe I, I did a remote viewing uh, special on this where I looked into a whole bunch of the history behind it, too. And, uh, yeah, it's like a story of creation and destruction and Star Wars, basically. It's, it's really interesting. So if y'all have a chance, anybody watching this show, y'all go check out my Judicola uh, and Sukalu show that I did. It's on my playlist here on my YouTube channel. Yeah, you know, uh, and when people talk about Native American legends, a lot of times you hear, you know, the Navajo kind of get a lot of, and they've got good legends because that's where a lot of the Skinwalker stuff comes from Navajo. Mm -hmm. um, if you really look into it, as I and you know, yeah, I'm a little, 
little biased on this because I do have Cherokee. My great grandmother was half Cherokee. Uh, there's a lot of really cool legends in in Cherokee folklore, and oh yeah, it, it, you know a lot of the Cherokee legends are not are not um, dark like some of them are. The, a lot of the Cherokee legends are more like lesson oriented, like the, the the one of the two wolves, you know, with the old grandfather was telling uh, his mm-hmm. grandson about uh, everyone has two wolves inside of them. An yeah. evil wolf and a good wolf, and then the grandson says, "Well, which wolf wins, grandfather?" And grandfather says, "Which one? Whichever one you feed the most." Exactly. So, a lot of the Cherokee legends were were based on teaching people and things like that. But they do have some of the some of the dark ones, like Spearfinger, things like that. That's, that was pretty dark, but that's a little dark. We'll, we'll get into co- to a couple of other ones, uh, other legends too. I did want to mention the sky ships over cashers because I did mention that uh, about, I, I mentioned cashers and I did spend the weekend up there. It was about 10 years ago. And we watched the sky ships over cashers all weekend. These, these spaceships, uh, there were, uh, I think there were four of them uh, that were constantly out in the, up in the sky and chief David, who I was with actually called them in. And, uh, and they just showed up and there was a lot of high strangeness going on around us that weekend, but uh, there are sky ships over cashers. There's websites. You guys can go check that out. Look up sky ships over cashers. There's books written on it. Uh, and they seem to be real UFOs flying over cashers, North Carolina. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's really cool. Now there's also something else called the wampus cat. Are you familiar with the wampus cat? Yep. With Johnny and I did a show on that one. Okay, well, I just and found that. I, I have some other pictures, but I, for whatever reason, I only uploaded the statue, which is weird because this thing has got, was that six legs? Yeah, the actual oh legend God. about that is actually pretty funny, or not funny, I'm sorry, <laughs> is, is pretty interesting is what I meant to say. I guess I was looking at the picture when I said funny. Uh, yes. Yeah, that that's basically about the cat killed uh, a brave, and his wife pretty much took... Uh, took revenge on the cat and she's the one that killed killed it and um something to do with a mask that she she put on to, to help her be able to fight the cat uh but there's you know there's been a lot of different descriptions of it and that that was one of them that it had six legs um one of them that says it looks it's a cross between a, a wild cat and a bear um i think some of them maybe a dog and a in a a big mountain lion was across. It's, it's one of those. It's got like fifteen different, you know, different variations of it. But it's a, it's actually a pretty cool Cherokee legend too. It is, and well, yeah. I've also read that it walks on two legs. Mm-hmm. That was that's that's one of them. Uh, they, there's another where it's called the Cherokee Death Cat versus the Wampus. You know, a lot of the Native Americans, they, it's called the Cherokee Death Cat, but more of the rest of us call it the Wampus Cat. Or, or the Wampus Beast, uh, that goofy show, uh, Mountain Monsters, actually did a show on that one too. Which, was, knowing the legend and then watching that, it's so comical to to watch them talk about that and have little snippets of the of what the actual legend is in there, built around this fake show. <laughs> yeah. out. But you know they do have a, you know little snippets of the real stuff in there, so it, it's fun to watch just to just so you can try to pick out what, what they're saying that's actually part of the legend versus what they're just sensationalizing for Hollywood, so to speak. But, yeah, uh, yeah that's that's a pretty popular, you know, I think uh, I think that's, that was actually one of our most popular episodes. I think we've got over 100 really? views on that one. Really? Yeah. Wow, I, I need to look at, I need to remote view that one. Okay. There's also another beast, of the beast of Bladenboro. Blank, is it? Blandenboro. Blandenboro, are you familiar with that one? Not well. Blandenboro. It's a, it's a, this was from the 1950s, actually. Okay, so I don't think you were born back then. I wasn't. Okay, but, um, no, not, I was, I was still a few years away back in the 50s. I was still a few years away myself, just a few. Um, but yeah, uh, there was, this was a very violent animal. It was, um, it was responsible for some gruesome animal deaths and then in the 1950s it killed crushed and decapitated animals 
Uh, people claimed to have seen it. They said it was about two feet tall, dark fur. fur. It looked like a wildcat, but it was larger. Um, and some of the animals it killed, it drained the blood out of them. So it was a blood sucker. Hmm. Kind of like a chupacabra or something. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It sounds, sounds more like a chupacabra thing. But, you yeah. know, those pictures, that to me, that looks more like a dog man. It looks like a dog man, I was going to say. like, And they say two feet tall, but I'm assuming that's on four legs. Yeah, I, that's probably two feet at the shoulders, which is pretty yeah. big for a... I mean, you know, that... The, it's your a approach, dog, dog size. Yeah. That's, so, that's, that's on the big side for a, for, a nor, for a North American wildcat. That's, that's pretty big. Yeah. Well, it looks more like a dog in those pictures. Those are some of the pictures that I found for it. I mean, that looks, this looks more like a panther. So it's just kind of a, it's kind of a weird mix, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And there, there's there been, that's been some on the ride there. too. Uh, Black panther sightings around this area. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay, let's, let's move on. You know, I'd mentioned the, the sky ships over cashers. Well, that might have a little something to do with aliens. Okay, and uh, and there's a very another famous Cherokee legend of the Moon Eyed People. Okay, the Moon Eyed People of North Carolina. And uh, let's see, they have some notes on these. I wrote to some me notes that on that looks like what most people describe the Grays as. That oh, looks like absolutely. They were little people. Yeah, little mm -hmm. people, three feet tall, pale skin, big eyes, and they lived underground in caves. Imagine that. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, they were they sound just like grace. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and and that's something that I've that I've since I've been doing my show, been a part of DA show. I did not realize how many cave systems were <laughs> around. It, it, you know, there's there's some cave systems you can go in in one state and come out almost in two states over. I mean, yeah, the underground and. That's something that uh, that we've kind of speculated on is if you overlay, and we've actually overlaid the maps, if you overlay the 411s, yep. Sasquatch attacks, and caves, they are shockingly similar. That If you overlay all, all three of those maps, they match up really, really well. They do, yeah. Uh, the missing persons clusters, okay? Mm -hmm. Those those it's are... The 411s, yeah. Yeah. Those go right over the cave systems and uh, the, and Bigfoot sightings because I had a map yep. with all the Bigfoot sightings. It's, yep. it's all this stuff. All this, it's like areas of high strangeness. Mm -hmm. But could it have something to do with the deep underground military bases too? Because those kind of line up as well. Yeah. Well, and and we said that you know there's 85 million acres of national forests. That's that's not that's national. That's not even the state parks. That's just 85 mm -hmm. million acres of national. Forest. If we can't do anything. We can't go in. Can't carry gun. Can't do. Can't do nothing. In. What can you hide in eighty-five million acres? We're not supposed to. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot. You got a lot. <laughs> a lot. And also, I mean, just South Carolina alone. I was reading that there's about eighty. What is it? Eighty thousand acres of federally owned land out there mm -hmm. um, for things to hide. When I was just looking up South Carolina alone, I mean that's. Yeah. That's a lot of well, land. That's what I'm saying. It, that that 85 million acres of national that's that doesn't count all the state, which is basically the same. You can't you know you can't do anything inside those either. You're not supposed to, like I said. But yeah, each state has their own national or their own state park. Like you know, North Carolina's got uh, what is uh, the Pisgah National Forest up there, yes. and there's there's some of the North Carolina state parks are attached to that. I mean that there's a lot of untouched area it, and. I've heard DA say this. If you look on a Google map and you look at the Mark Twain, yeah. look at how much untouched green, unbroken green there is from it almost goes across the entire country. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's I mean, that's a lot. There's 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 no way. It's almost like the ocean, right? It's like mm -hmm. we don't know what the heck's in the ocean. I mean, there's no. just so much we, out there. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do the ocean floor. Oh God, the moon's a touchy subject over here. Yes, so I, I, but but we know more about the surface of the moon than we do <laughs> our own ocean floor. That that to me is just wild. That that's yeah. that's the thing. But yes, you're right. The moon is a it's a touchy subject. I got that's a, a whole that's a whole another episode. Right? That's a whole other three episodes. 
Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm careful about what I say about the moon these days. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, we just don't know what all is going on underground. Uh, there's so much stuff in the caves. I just did a show last week on the Grand Canyon and Jesus Payan Jr. came on. We talked about uh, the ancient Egyptian artifacts that were found in the Grand Canyon, allegedly. Okay. But there's also been, um, I mean, I, I just think that there's, our history is not what we've been taught. First of all, no, um, then, then we actually have the, the other aspect of inner earth. Okay. And like a whole other element to all the of hollow earth, hollow earth theory. Yeah. Yeah. Which if you look at that, there again, Hollywood is, is got movies, but the whole uh, monster verse where Godzilla and King Kong, all this new stuff's out. They really, really uh, pile it on heavy about the hollow earth theory in that movie. But that's something that's been talked about for years. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we got, what is it, Project High Jump up in, um, in down in Antarctica. Um, inner Earth, a lot of these things that I've, I've been doing shows on and remote viewing, a lot of it has to do with Inner Earth. So there's just so much more going on with that. Um, and I think it, it deserves to be looked into a little bit more. Well, did, didn't you remote view uh, LBL and see I some did. underground bunkers over there? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, and for DA, I remote viewed the Joe Bald Recreation Area, mm -hmm. and there was absolutely a facility underneath that that piece of land right there. Yeah, that. So that's that's the one where he took the picture for his book cover. Yeah, and somebody found something, saw something in the trees behind him. He had me remote view that, actually. Yeah, and 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 what my data was suggesting was that that was a what they call a watcher. Okay, mm -hmm. and that, it was some sort of like a dog man type of a creature, like um, uh, and it was guarding that facility right there. Yeah, and if that thing wanted to have killed him, I think it would have. Okay, so uh, I don't, I don't know what that, what that says or what that means, but uh, it, it just, it was sitting there staring at him. It was a watcher, which, which could take you into the whole Nephilim kind of vibe and take you down that route as being a watcher, you know. Uh, but I'm, I don't know a whole lot about that. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Inner Earth, it's really interesting. I think I've got one more cryptid. Are you down to talk about one more cryptid? Um, yeah. Let's see. I, I got at least one more. I mean, I've got more than that, but um, let's see what I got a picture of here. I've loaded up some pictures. Oh, the Third Eye Man. <laughs> okay. What yeah, that's the, one I don't know anything about. So, yeah, let's I'm talk. Let's I didn't even take notes on this because I read up on him and I thought, okay, I, I don't even have, they, they don't have a picture of him, but I, I pulled up this because I thought it was funny. <laughs> third eye, this third eye man. Okay. So there's a, one of the colleges in South Carolina. I can't remember which one it is. One of the bigger colleges down there, uh, underneath there's apparently there's like a tunnel system underneath this college or uh, some kind of tunnel, tunnel system. And someone had gone down there and encountered a man wearing an all silver suit and he had an extra eye on his forehead, okay? And uh, there may be some people in chat today that, that might have some insight on this because I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it, but, uh, but there is a legend about it. And they say that some of the fraternities down there, uh, there was actually a fraternity that had heard about that. Uh, and they took some of their initiates down into that tunnel system for, you know, for giggles, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they were chased out by a man wearing a silver suit with an extra eye on his forehead. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and so I thought that was, and, and actually he attacked those kids. He attacked them. And one of the, one of them got hurt allegedly. And, uh, but there's a legend of the, the third eye man underneath one of the colleges in South Carolina. Okay. Well, that made me think of something that's out of Alabama. There's, there was something, um, that caught my attention a while back. It's called the Falkville Metal Man. Okay. And uh, and this this actually is something that I've, I've been wanting to do a remote viewing target on. I actually did it. So I have remote viewed what this is. I cannot give my information away because I'm going to be doing a show about the Falkville Metal Man tomorrow night. Right here at the Cryptid Huntress on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so everybody, please tune in and, uh, and join me tomorrow night with the Falkville Metal Man. Okay, this was actually out of Alabama, Robbie. Are you familiar with it? No, but I was just, I was formulating my opinion of what, what that looks like. <laughs> no, right. That what looks, what looks that looks like, like to me is that looks like the, uh, 
aircraft uh, firefighting suits that they wear because yeah. uh, aircraft fires, uh, the ARF units, those fires burn so much hotter than like a regular fire that you, because I was a uh, firefighter too. Uh, that looks like the suits that they wear because they're a lot more protective than normal turnout gear. That's just what that looks like to me. It does. It, it doesn't look very streamlined like you would think an no. ET would look, does it? No, that, that's back from the 1970s. It, look, it looks like there's cuffs where, where his gloves are put on. The, the helmet looks like it, it's got a hood, which drapes down to about right in here. When you put that on, it's got yeah. the dark colored mask. That's just what, when I see that, that's what I, I look at and I think of an aircraft firefighter. Yes, it, it, it definitely looks kind of put together like a costume mm -hmm. in my opinion that's my opinion but yeah. i do I, I do remote view this guy and uh and actually the chief of police i believe uh is the person who took a call this is the story is that the chief of police took a call uh from a frantic woman who claimed that a ufo has landed uh on her property or somewhere somewhere around falkville alabama okay and uh and so he went out there to investigate it and was able to snap some polaroid pictures of it <laughs> Okay, um, and so it's it's been a, a matter of debate for quite some time, and uh, and so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Halloween costume. I do a DIY man-made Halloween costume. Yes, Area Fifty One. Hey, Juanito. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, but but it, but that third eye man kind of did remind me, like the suit, the, the way they described it, it does remind me of this guy, right here. So, so that's yeah. one. That um, that is exactly. I mean, I, that's when I when I look at that. That's exactly what I see is somebody standing there in one of those fire suits. <laughs> yes, it does look like that. Yeah, I gotta say it, it does. It does look man made to me, absolutely. And we didn't even really talk about the lizard man too much. I mean, we mentioned it in the very beginning, uh, but that that is probably South Carolina's most famous cryptid. Yeah, and um, uh, a interesting fact about that, uh, mm -hmm. you. How how far into it did you do you do you read all the? Do you yeah, I've gone. Listen, I've gone deep into this one. Uh, I've done uh, so, several shows on it. So you know you know about the the kid that his car got attacked, right? Yes. You know what you know what happened to him? Eventually, or that night? Yeah, eventually. Yes. yes. Well, I, I've he's, heard that he he's not he, the only I, one either. Okay. A lot well, of people who have and uh somebody wrote a book but i can't remember i don't i don't know if it was lyle blackburn that wrote the book maybe gary hart some somebody wrote a book okay about that and they they chronicled that and a lot of people who witnessed that have mysteriously died like that kid died on a home invasion he was not he was a straight a uh, straight laced kid wasn't in any kind of trouble and he died on a home invasion, and they wrote it up to, as as a bad drug deal or a drug deal gone bad or whatever. Yeah. And that was not that that kid's style. He wasn't into any of that stuff, but mysteriously died of a home invasion, and never never caught who who did it or anything. Oh my so gosh! It, there's a and there, he like I said, he's not the only one. It, it if you really really do a deep dive on that. Uh, if you go back and listen to that episode that on my show mm -hmm. about that one, Lance actually talks about that, and he actually gives the name of the book and the guy who wrote the book. It's a uh, it's pretty interesting stuff about that about all the the people who have mysteriously died that came forward and said they saw, had seen it. Yeah, I remember there being a whole lot of witnesses to that. I mean, there was a man who was flying his airplane uh, either I think it was la either landing or taking off in his small airplane. He was taken off, and and lizard man walked by the runway. I mean, it was kind of just out there. Um, that's the that's the guy I was telling you about that is is gone. Oh. That was that was his sighting that kind of vaulted him into uh into taking taking on looking and investigating this thing. Wow, that is that is really interesting. Um, well, when I I remote viewed the lizard man actually, and it turned out to be a reptilian who lived underground. Okay, and uh, and it wasn't just one. There were there were several of them uh, around there. Probably probably hundreds of them. Okay, yep. but um, but it's just like with Bigfoot. You know, people see that Patty video, and they we all think of Bigfoot as Patty, but really there's so many of them, and uh, and they're all different types. And you know, down here in the South, we got the skunk ape. Um, mm -hmm. they're not the same size or the color. Honey, uh, I was 
Mm -hmm. Um, what else you got down around this area? Uh, well, Tennessee Wildman's kind of sort of in the same area, but there again, like I said, that, I think that's a, a, I think that's just yeah. You talk about the Ohio grass man. Okay. Okay. It's people. That's the only part of the of the United States where they see these these big structures that they build. And, but that's the only area that, that grass grows in that they use like that. So when you talk about a species being adaptive, and if you if you go and and subscribe to the same theory that DA and a couple of other of us have started to that maybe these things are subterranean and they're out and when they're out they have to build structures. Okay, well if they're in Ohio and they they got to build a structure. They build it out of what they what they can, so you get these grass structures. But what do all these structures? What do they kind of resemble? If you think about there, it's not like it's just a you know just a, a lean. To, it look it, it's totally surrounding them on almost all sides, almost like a cave. Mm -hmm. So, and you start looking at the the maps that line up, like we talked about. Maybe these things are subterranean. So maybe all these uh, think about this wood knocks. Do you think Bigfoot's walking around the woods with a Louisville Slugger or a stick in his hand? all the time probably not Maybe. what if he no. what if these wood knocks that we hear what if they're clicks like the tongue pops you imagine something that big is going to make that sound and it's going to be really loud yeah they've already proven that humans can use echolocation out of their own bodies there's a blind guy that they set up a that has taught yeah. himself how to do this set him up on a bike course and he went through this whole bike course clicking, clicking. yeah i saw that so, what if these what if all these bigfoot as you think about the the range that they would have to have mm -hmm. as far as their home range like a, a mountain lion's got a 260 mile range mostly something the size of a bigfoot's gonna have a lot more than that well go back to the comment we made about how massive these cave systems are mm -hmm. it kind of starts making sense and lining up so if you're in the in these caves and it's totally dark in there and you can't see anything and you need some way to get around, who's to say that they hadn't learned how to echolocate like this? I 100% agree with that. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people, like myself included on my team, I think that they're, um, those wood knocks are actually their mouse clicking. They're doing like a tongue click or something. I think a lot of people think that. Um, but uh, but who knows? I don't know for sure. I could remote view it. I don't know why I never have. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's 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 different. Oh, and Tom, Tom from North Carolina Cryptid and Paranormal Project, uh, you were asked. He was asking uh, what the case was that you and I were talking about, where the man was basically acquitted for those murders. Uh, that was the Oklahoma. Up, Tom, the Oklahoma Girl Scout. Google Oklahoma Girl Scout killings, and that'll give you uh, that'll start you in that rabbit hole. Yeah, I believe Michael's in the chat now too with abnormal investigation. So yes, um, Mike, you can, you can you uh, can you can point him in the right direction on that and correct any errors that I may have made <laughs> in my story. Cause Mike is the expert on this, not me out. Everything that I was saying was stuff that I hopefully remembered correctly from, from his show. He is very, very well versed in this case. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be talking with him on Saturday night on spaced out radio. That's going to be another great show. And, uh, you know, one thing that we haven't talked about tonight, or, or to, I say tonight, it's the middle of the day here <laughs> today. I don't know what day it is or what time it is anymore. Time is but an illusion. Uh, what is dog man? We haven't mentioned dog man today. And, uh, do you guys get any dog man reports up in South Carolina? Yeah, actually, um, uh, I've heard, um, Johnny actually, uh, was talking to a couple people in up in this area that think that they, they have seen that. Um, and Nick Valente actually went into North Carolina about a bunch. He, he, feels like, yeah, he feels like it, what he was investigating was possibly just a black bear and which, you know, that's the kind of guy Nick is. He's not going to go in and say, uh, you know, he, he won't, he's like DA and I, he, he looks for, you know, the logical thing for and so but he actually had a bunch of reports in up around north carolina not far from from where i'm at now actually um but yeah there's been there's been some dogman sightings coming in there's one in uh uh i can't remember which town in anderson county which is uh 
probably about 20, 30 miles from, from here. Uh, there was, and I won't say it was in, I'm not going to say because I can't remember off the top of my head, which can, but not far from here. There was like four or five sightings that uh, Norm and I had actually come across that were actually compiling some information to do a show on that one too. Wow. Okay. Well, I did. I talked to Nick last weekend. I had, I actually had Adam Davis on Space Out Radio. Uh, that was a, a, an amazing show, by the way, talking about, he's one of the co-founders, original co-founders of the North American Dogman Project. He's on the International Dogman Project. He's the head of the Ohio chapter now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had him on. Oh man, if any of y'all missed that show, please go back and watch that on Space Out Radio. It was awesome. But I talked to Nick right before that show, and he had, he had just gotten home from being out in North Carolina, uh, doing some investigating from some reports. Yep, uh, that's that's what they, I'm they, talking about. Yeah, well they well they had the, he had the the one that turned out to be a bear with a long snout. Mm -hmm. um, he, he had that, but this is a different case, and uh, and and they actually did have some legit evidence this time uh, of, of possible dog man out there. So I'm going to bring him on my show. We're going to be talking about it soon. So uh, maybe next Mike, week. <laughs> Mike just put something down there. You might want to pop okay. in. He's got some more information on it that he's working on the case now. Uh, also, right. William, William just sent me a message, told me to tell you, hey, Jessica. Hey, William hey, Mike. William. What's up, William? <laughs> I love William. Yep. I hope you're feeling better, bud. Yep. Feeling better. We're praying for you. Always. Yes. Yeah, well, we're going to have abnormal investigations on Space Out Radio this weekend. Y'all tune in. We'll, we'll probably be talking about that Girl Scout case. Uh, it's tragic. It's very sad. Um, I, I'm try, I try to keep things lighthearted and, uh, and um, on the up and up, but uh, the sad reality of cryptids and cryptid research uh, is that a lot of people go missing. There's a lot of deaths, uh, unexplained deaths, a lot of cover-ups. And, uh, and I, and I like, I like bringing that out to the public. We've got to shine a little light on. Yeah. And, and there, there's really no way to keep that one lighthearted. I mean, it, it's, uh, that's a viewer discretion episode. Yeah. It, it's just, it, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in that that just makes you go, it just tears your heart out. Cause it, it's not like it was adults that went somewhere and did something stupid and you know, well, you know, but they, they get what they get. They, these were kids yeah. and, you know, that didn't have any, you know, intention of being somewhere where they thought they were um, in any kind of danger. They were, you know, supposed to be in, being watched by camp counselors. And it's, it's tragic all the way around. There's no way to light, make it lighthearted mm -hmm. at all. It's, no. It is what it is, like you just said. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have a kid and he's only eight. So I, I don't like, whoo. If, if he were to go camping, I'd have to be right there with him. He's not going by himself on a boy. Well, he's not a boy scout, but he's not going by himself out there. Yeah. Not without his mama protecting him. So, or somebody, somebody that I trust. Yeah. Um, but that's just something we got to, we got to take all this into consideration. Uh, just in everyday life. A lot of dangers out there. And uh, let's, let's leave this on a, on a light note tonight. How, I keep saying tonight. <laughs> Well, we're all used to being on the show at night, not during the day. So, <laughs> I've got my days all mixed up. Okay, um, so there's also this. This will be the last one. There are modern day pterosaur sightings in South Carolina. Have you heard of uh, people seeing pterodactyls and things like that out there? Yeah, all all over the place. Not just South Carolina, but you know, all over the place. And I think a lot of the Thunderbird sightings. That's what that's what you're what you're seeing. Uh, these, these yeah. pterosaurs. Um, see, I, you know, I, I'm not going to get this into a religious thing, but I believe dinosaurs and humans were on the face of the earth at the same time. I don't believe there was this big time gap between that. And, you know, if you watched the show the other night, you know, you, you saw that picture that I put up of a human track and then a dinosaur track down on top of it. And, you know, I know that I'm, a, you're a train tracker too, though, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take a train tracker to look at that human footprint and see that the dinosaur footprint was on top of it and it was fossilized into the rock. So it's been there long enough for that mud to turn into rock. You don't have to be trained in tracking like we are to mm -hmm. look at that and say, okay, the human footprint was put down first, the dinosaur, or the, or the big lizard, whatever you want to call it. 
So yeah. I believe that, it, you know, because they found uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex bones. They still had DNA and, you know, marrow in the bones. That stuff don't last millions of years. I'm sorry. It just, it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. And, the timelines are all messed up. Yeah. I tell you that. There's something going on here. Well, and they they use that circular reasoning. Well, how do you date the fossils? Well, we date the fossils by the rocks that are around them. Well, how do you date the rocks? We date the rocks by the fossil. That's circular reasoning. Period, point blank, in the discussion. <laughs> and, you know, you, you ask these people, okay, well, explain polystrata fossils to me. Uh, well, you don't get a petrified tree because like, all these layers of strata are supposed to be like, what, 10,000 years old a piece? Like, this layer's here and this layer is 10,000 years older than this layer and then this layer is 10,000 years so how do you get a petrified tree that's shoved down in between all these layers and it's petrified all the way around that doesn't happen the 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 conditions that you have to have for petrification are so specific that that's that tree's not going to stand there or sit there for millions and millions, millions of years intact while it fossilizes that's right that's right. I, I agree with you. There's more than just cave paintings that have humans and dinosaurs beside each other. There are Look at paintings. The yeah, I mean, for, they go all the way back through history of humans and dinosaurs together. Now, could it have been like a somebody just having fun writing that just for fun? Yeah, or it could just be that was actually what was going on. There were and dinosaurs and humans coexisting. Those Inca stones were supposedly 4,000 years old. I don't think they were on Google 4,000 years ago saying, what does a T-Rex look like? What does a Stegosaurus <laughs> look like? What does a Triceratops look like? Okay, that's it. I'm going I'm to go over here and chisel it on the stuff. They didn't, it, they did it because that's what they saw. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, ha we have something that uh, Jesus Pian Jr. and I were doing, we've done some shows and Brown Dwarf, Brown Dwarf's in the chat. Hey, Brown. Um, we, we talked about timeline deception and how, um, you know, are we just switching timelines or has there been a total cover up? We know the cover ups are real, you know, uh, government, people in charge, whoever it is. They don't want us to know our true history. And uh, and these but these timelines, um, just not, our history books are not what happened. I don't think the word dinosaur <laughs> was not made till the 1830s or the 1860s. I can't remember exactly which, but it was 1800s when the word dinosaur was coined. OK. <laughs> But like I said, not turn this into religion, but the word dragon was mentioned in the Bible hundreds of times. So dragon, if that's right. If you're if you're some person and you see an iguana the size of a school bus, because reptiles grow their entire life. As long as they're living, they're growing. So mm -hmm. and things live longer back then. So if you got an iguana that lived nine hundred years, how big is it gonna be in nine hundred years if it's got a steady food source? It's gonna be pretty big. It's going to be huge. Somebody in the chat said, I think it was Space Cadet Lottie. She said, we need a bigger saddle, boys. <laughs> got to get a big saddle for these dinosaurs. Yeah. I mean, and, it, just think about it. That's wild. Uh, humans living with dinosaurs. And you got to think, what if humans were bigger back then? You know, what if we're just like miniature humans now? We've got all these all, giant skeletons everywhere. What if humans were well, actually larger back then? DA put a picture up the other night in our show when we talked about giants. There's... So, uh, some fossil records of a 36 foot human or 35 foot. I can't remember one of those two, but you know, Goliath <laughs> in the Bible was supposedly 10 foot six. Um, his, hey, his brother Og was like 12 and a half feet. Okay. And think about it. Okay. So I did another show with William Nighthawk, who's in the chat. Hey, William. Um, we, we taught and Dennis Carroll, we, we actually talked about the sleeping giants. Uh, the petrified giants who could be mountains today, you know, uh, islands, they look like sleeping humans. Well, it, it looks, my mind. These, uh, these Norwegian movies where they talk about trolls and things like that. And the, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of those were, you know, the, the thing was if trolls were, caught out in the in the daylight in the sunlight sunlight turned them into stone and that's why they're that way but stuff like that like i said all these legends are based somewhere in truth so what if they saw something like that and it was sleeping and all oh, the sun turned it into stone and now it's a mountain but you go look at all these movies like uh troll 
they're standing out there in front of what they think is a big mountain, and all of a sudden this thing opens its eyes and stands up, and it's, you know, yeah, exactly, Mike. Yeah. Talks about the giants in there. Uh, but there is so much, like you said, of our history or things like that. History is written by those who won the battles. It's not written because it was that, you know, it's written by those who won, and it's what they want. You know, think about if Germany had won World War One or World War Two, or excuse me, World War Two. What would our history books say then? Our history books wouldn't say the things they say right now. Exactly, that's very true. It it history goes to the victors, right? Like yeah. their, their account. Uh, so so obviously, um, I don't know. So at some point, all of these giants have been eradicated, um, put to sleep. God knows what. Um, it's something that I've been talking about a lot, though, and we're still have we're still having giant sightings. OK, and we got the giant of Kandahar. We got that giant up in Canada that was filmed. The guy who filmed it is dead now. OK. Um, mm. uh, w w what is going on? OK, what is going on? Yeah. And um, Look, Shane, uh, Shane's got it just from, right. That's the man in the high castle. Uh, there we go. Hey, Shane. Shane with the uh, West Coast Dogman Project. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's up, Shane? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about this before, that veil thinning. I I don't think the veil's there anymore. You know, That's things right. like and I you know, whether you want to believe that the collider in CERN had something to do with this or not, was you know, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but we we already know for a fact that they opened portals when that thing went off. They yeah, absolutely they the what is it, the god particle that they mm -hmm. that they have no clue what it what it did but they created it or whatever i mean that they, they're they're messing in some things that have really screwed this world up and you you start looking in that the mandela effect and things like that. there's so much stuff that just makes your head swim about this that wow yeah um well, there's definitely a, a vested interest in uh, changing our timelines. Okay, changing timelines for whatever reason. There's a whole lot of time manipulation going on. Look at the, from the chronovisor at the Vatican to uh, Project Pegasus uh, to even the things that I do like remote viewing, like Project Stargates, Project Get Jedi. There's all sorts of weird, weird stuff going on. I'm not saying I'm a part of any of that. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, what I do with my remote viewing stems from projects like that. Um, well, and um, um, I think Anthony was going to brought this up. Look at the uh, the space force. Look at their symbol. Yeah, Pull that up it looks and look like at Star Trek, doesn't it? They, exactly. It looks like Starfleet Command. Like the one of the first. Like when you go back to the books, Gene Roddenberry's mm -hmm. first books before it was what you saw on the TV show. It looks yeah. almost identical. Anthony put the picture up of of them side by side. One I think it was Anthony that was doing it, but it is, I mean, just eerily similar to to Starfleet Commands. Uh, it, things are just they're weird nowadays, and something big is in the works. I don't know when it's going to happen or what, but something is going to happen before too long. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, you don't. I, I don't. I don't know. You, I mean, just, you just feel it. You just don't know. It's, I, yeah. Same with me. I'm it's, not sure what's going to happen, but there's something coming. I think too. You know, in law enforcement, I think disclosures about, coming. We talk about in law enforcement something getting your police bone humming, like you, you <laughs> go up the car and you see something that just just ain't right, but you don't know exactly what it is. Right. That or you know or you know it's a red flag or something like that. There's just there's a lot of red flags that are going up right now. Yes, a lot. Well, a lot is being exposed, and that's why uh, I think a lot of this is being exposed. And I think that there's a vested interest in trying to keep everything covered up. But they, whoever's covering stuff up, they can't keep covering it up yeah. and anymore. And like Mike just said, all the all the train derailments here lately. That's right. Yes, I was trying to pull that up. These, these comments, we got a lot of people in the chat today. Thank y'all so much for all the comments today, uh, y'all. This has been a really fun, amazing show today. And yeah, we've got um, it's distractions. It's also uh, there's, there's just so much. <laughs> there's a lot of distractions from what's really going on. Um, but also, I think there's a vested interest in taking over more land and things like that, too. So that could be a part of those train derail derailments with all the 
chemicals and you got to, well, you know, we're, we're under attack in my but opinion. Surprisingly, right before this, the first one that we really heard, I think it was one in Ohio. They just said whatever that chemical was, they just had dropped it down. Uh, it always oh, not as dangerous as. Oh, now just, it's not. Now it's not. But just just <laughs> prior to the der derailments when they they lowered how dangerous it was supposed to be. Wow. Just, but it's just because they okay. said it was, not because of anything not else. Yeah. Well, there that's a that's a whole other rabbit hole, I guess you can call it. And like I, I think I, I mentioned the other night, I think these rabbit holes are becoming wormholes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We don't, we don't know where you go hop in. We don't know where we're coming out on the other end. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it, but, it, but it does, it is, it is fun looking into all this stuff. We are living in a very interesting, interesting time. And, uh, and it's important for all of us to take care of ourselves and, uh, and to, to never stop looking into things and question everything, I think. And um, it's, uh, yeah, we, we buckle your seatbelts, everybody. <laughs> Cause I don't know what's coming, but, uh, but, but yeah, we're, we're here talking about all these interesting cryptids and there's been an uptick in cryptid sightings, I believe. Um, especially since I started doing these shows, I think, I feel like there's a, a definitely been an uptick in sightings and things. So Robbie, thank you so much for being here today. This has been amazing. I've had so much fun. I hope that you'll come back and, and join me again. Anytime. And, uh, yeah. There, hey, I've still got more cryptids we could talk about just out of South Carolina alone. Okay. Yeah, there's there's cool. a lot. South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia. There's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're everywhere. And uh, yeah, well, I want everybody, y'all, please join me tomorrow night. I'm gonna have a really awesome remote viewing show. Uh, I've I've remote viewed the Faultville Metal Man. I'm probably gonna be talking about him tomorrow. Uh, and so that's gonna be that's gonna be a really fun show. So y'all y'all tune in 8 p.m. Uh, tomorrow night. Robbie, where can people find you and your podcast? Uh, my podcast is on uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube. It's uh, what's really out there. Um, uh, we we're kind of on a lull right now because of uh, my daughter moving out and her and her boyfriend trying to get stuff situated. So uh, Tyler, her boyfriend, he's my tech guy. He does my editing and everything, and Taylor does my art. The cool little thumbnails that you see. My daughter does those, so uh, and they don't charge me, so I'm not fussing. And, but nice. uh, you know, and life happens. Norm's been working. I've I had a couple soccer games on Tuesday nights, and you know, we we hadn't had a chance to record. Hopefully, next Tuesday we'll be back on because we've got like four or five episodes that you know we we'll have an episode and something happen. We won't, so that'll be two episodes. And then the next Tuesday night we hadn't, so I said, so we've got about six episodes that we're behind that we're just waiting to record. Uh, but you can also find me on DAX Machina every Wednesday and Saturday night. Um, we'll be on tonight. Uh, don't know exactly what the topic is yet. I don't, uh, DA hadn't sent that out, but uh, it's, it's probably going to be really interesting, really good. We usually go about two and a half, three hours, somewhere around there. Just kind of, you've seen it, Jessica. It's just us sitting around talking about it. Me, Anthony, DA, Doc, uh, Steve. Steve usually is on Saturday nights because he works a lot during the week. But, uh, you know. Those are the two I, places. I hadn't only seen it. I've been on. I've been on that show once or twice. So mm -hmm. it's. Uh, it was before. It was, I think it was before you came on there, but I'm not sure. It's been you, on. We've been on one show together. That was the one we was talking about the other day with the uh, the questionable individual that kept wanting to wanting you to go out with him. Oh God! Yes, that, yeah, that's I was on that. the D A X Machina dating show that night. That was yeah, embarrassing. <laughs> it was yeah, funny though. Yeah, yeah we had to. Uh, we had to uh, block that guy and. Get him out of the oh, he was nice. He was sending in a bunch of money trying to, trying to. Yeah. He was trying so to impress you, I think. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's part of be, doing a live show. Okay. So it, it, it was happens. always good fun. It happens. It does. Well, Robbie, thank you so much for being here. Uh, everybody tune in to DX Machina. I guess that's tonight. You said tonight and then Saturday yep. night too. And, uh, and y'all tune in to my show tomorrow night. Nine our time here. The Mine and Jessica's yes, time here, yeah. but uh, yes, uh, eight eight o'clock central, I think, is what time they're on. So yes. nine o'clock right. Eastern, eight central. And uh, Shane, you can tell what time it is on the West Coast because I have no clue. Uh, it's three hours difference. Yeah, so, yeah, it'd be six over there. Yeah, yeah. I, these so, time zones get me confused. I've had to learn the hard way. I've, yeah. So, 
But uh, but yeah, and everybody tune in this weekend to Space Out Radio. Um, I have Mike from Abnormal uh, Investigations, who's in the chat today. It's going to be on my show on Saturday night, and then Sunday, guess who's in my on my uh, show? Anthony from DAX Machina. <laughs> so the pit bull um, himself, the pit bull himself, is going to be uh, on my show on Sunday night. So we've got a lot to talk about then too. So um, everybody, have a wonderful day. Thank y'all so much for being here. We will all see y'all. Tonight, we'll see you tonight, Robbie, on your show. Okay. Yeah. And uh and y'all and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Yeah.